So we're, we're here in the virtualization and infrastructure as a service dev room, and there is a plenty, plenty of interesting talks today, mostly about how you can uh, make use of interesting projects, but also uh, like, uh, new features in various projects. And this talk is slightly different because I'm uh, trying to address, this is a dev room, so I'm trying to address the developer portion of the room um, and, and try to answer a few, a few interesting questions for you, like why, why would you ever want to contribute to OpenStack? Why is it something, what's in there for you? What, what did you gain out of, out of uh, being interested with this project? And once we answer that question, we can go a bit deeper, like where, where does it actually make sense to contribute within OpenStack, which is a collection of projects? Uh, what type of contributions there is uh, for, for, for OpenStack? And finally, if you're like fully convinced, how, what are the first steps for, uh, for uh, contributing to OpenStack? So the, the first and most important question to answer is why? Why would you ever want to contribute to OpenStack? Uh, I would argue that it's, it's because it's a smart move for, for a developer for a number of reasons. Um, uh, first of all, you get, uh, there are a number of companies that are involved in, in OpenStack today and uh, it's a quite a significant uh, cross-section of the industry that is represented here. This is the list of sponsors for uh, the, our, last, uh, our last development summit in, uh, in Hong Kong. And if you look at the names, they're there. Uh, it's like most of the IT industries in, in, is, is present in, uh, in some form in OpenStack. It's not only a, a large cross section of the IT industry, it's also like the, the open source friendly portion of, of the industry. So you end up, if you work on OpenStack, you end up being visible and noticed by, by those companies. It's not just open source friendly companies. Uh, it's also, we also have Oracle, Microsoft or VMware like contributing stuff. So it's not, it's not like all, all open source friendly companies, but most of the open source friendly companies will, you, will, you will find there. With the notable ex exception of two, like Amazon and Google are not present in OpenStack because they basically run closed source proprietary software for their uh, public cloud offering. So you get noticed and then you can get a job quite easily because the, the OpenStack job market is, is quite hot. So you, this is a, a graph from Indeed.com uh, giving like the growth of jobs in, in recent times. And so you can see that Python is pretty hot. Then cloud is very hot. And then like OpenStack is extremely hot. So granted, you, we, we start from nothing. So it's quite easy to get up. But <laughs> uh, they, there is a shortage of knowledge in OpenStack developers. So nobody will ask for someone with uh, three years of OpenStack experience. Otherwise, the number of people who can actually answer that are like a handful of persons. Um, so if you build some kind of expertise in OpenStack, it's actually quite easy to get a job. From our last summit, we had like a room with maybe 3,000 people in there, and all the companies were, we, we, asked, uh, we asked them to raise their hand if they were hiring, and like all the room was having their hands up because they were really having trouble hiring enough people to work on this. So it's a smart thing because you actually can get a job working on a fully open source free software project. And then profit, uh, because the, since the job market is a bit constrained around OpenStack, it, there is actually extra value in, in, getting, uh, in getting OpenStack. Same, same company, Indeed.com, doing, doing stats. It's US salaries, not f French or European salaries. But you can see that software developers, Python developers, and Java developers are like at the same level, almost, almost the same level. Uh, whereas an OpenStack developer, the job market makes, the mechanics of the job market makes it like pay more. So you can profit. And then you can iterate on that. And that's an interesting thing that we built here because OpenStack is a project that is open, openly developed among a, a set of companies. There is no like parent companies or main sponsor or, or anything. And so it's not companies contributing code to OpenStack. It's actually developers, individual developers contributing code to OpenStack, same way as the Linux kernel or, or uh, Apache um, uh, project. So whatever influence you build when you work on OpenStack is not your company. It's, it's your influence. It's your um, uh, expertise that you build. It's, uh, you don't 
really your, your company, your employer will benefit, will benefit from that, obviously, but whatever influence you build over the project or expertise you build over the project is under your own name. So it's quite easy to switch employers. And so you can switch for the one that gives you a better package or, or gives you the opportunity to work from home or gives you the opportunity to work 100% of your time on the uh, upstream project. And it's not just like a myth. It's not just like a promise. Yeah, you will be able to switch employers whenever you want. If you look at this group, this is the technical committee of OpenStack. So the people that are elected to uh, make the final decisions. So every contributor votes and we get, some, some of us get elected to this, to this board. And in, on this picture, more than half of the members of the technical committee actually switched employers since they started working on OpenStack. So like seven out of 13 people here actually switched employer already. So it's not just like something I've said of, you know, to, to try to sell you to OpenStack, it's actually happening. We built a job market that is developer friendly, basically. And finally, uh, you should contribute to OpenStack because you're actually changing the world. You, uh, cloud computing is defining how IT resources will be consumed in the next decade and potentially after. And there is a monopoly building up, which is Amazon Web Services, and they are the de facto uh, standard. They have the, the market share, they are the, the, the elephant in the room. And if we don't react now, we are actually building the next Microsoft, the next Google, and with potentially for far more reaching uh, consequences. That's the main reason why I'm working on Postack is not to hand Amazon an easy victory. They're, they're very good, so it's a hard fight. And, and we're trying to fight it. You also push ve more vendors to open source. I was mentioning earlier Microsoft, Oracle, VMware. They went to OpenStack because they were kind of forced to. And so if we can move more of those traditional vendors to uh, open source friendly projects that are openly developed and not, not like a, an open source uh, <coughs> main sponsored thing, uh, then we, 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 we accomplished something. We brought free software and open source to a larger group of companies. And finally, we also promote a model that is, that is good for, I think, developers and uh, free software in general, which is uh, a project should exist outside of any corporate, uh, main corporate sponsor. So that's what we call open innovation. The idea that multiple companies should contribute to a same, the same project on equal terms without the, 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 the field of play being, being slanted towards one of them. That's a good model, and contributing to OpenStack is also a way to uh, encourage more companies to switch to that model, which is better. So I hope I convinced you. Um, now we can go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Quick question. The typical OpenStack developer that makes hundreds of 5K, what kind of company will hire him? What would be the typical job So the qu question is uh, which companies actually hire people for 105,000 uh, yes. dollars per year? What is typical company that would hire this person and what this person will typically it's, it's, it's the companies that you've, you, you've seen on the first slide with, with the numbers. So that would be the IBM, the Red Hats, the uh, uh, Samsung, uh, 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 Rackspace. To so there, there, there are different, different positions, obviously. You, you can be a bit customer facing or you can be fully on, a, on the open source project. Uh, you can be, I mean, there, there, there is the whole range of, of stuff. Sometimes it's, it's implementing, sometimes it's de deploying, sometimes it's, it's, uh, it's, but it's generally connected to uh, the, when, when they hire an open source developer, it's actually to contribute to the, to the open source project. So, uh, and, and, and one last thing about this. Uh, I haven't seen yet someone showing up at one of our developer summit unemployed and not getting back with a job. So uh, we have one in uh, Paris in uh, November. So uh, that's a good place to be if you're looking for, uh, if you like know how to write some code and want to get a job. So where? Uh, OpenStack is a collection of projects. So there are plenty of areas. If you have some expertise in some areas, it's interesting. To, to know where, what the landscape looks like. Uh, our main deliverable is uh, what we call the integrated release. That's the stuff that we release every six months uh, as, as, uh, as a common thing. Uh, there are incubated projects, which are like projects that want to become part of the integrated release. 
and there are a number of other, other projects. We regroup those projects in what we call programs, which are like basically teams of developers from various companies that get together with a common goal and work on a given number of, of code repositories. So you have like vertical ones like who, uh, um, which develop one of the key components of OpenStack, but there are also horizontal ones like QA or infrastructure where the goal is to serve all the rest of the project uh, with, with um, various things. So let's look at them more in detail. Um, the main integrated projects are Nova, which is like uh, VMs as a service. VMs, um, you, you have an API, you get a VM back, and you can, you can develop stuff on it. Swift is object storage. So that's uh, uh, file storage, blob storage in a redundant fashion. Uh, Cinder is block storage as a service, so you get back uh, uh, block, block devices. Neutron is all uh, network resources, so it can be network segments, ports, uh, firewalls between them, VPNs, uh, load balancers, that kind of stuff. Um, then you have Trove, which gives you databases as a service, so you like can provision databases that will be backed and, and scaled and and you can like you have an API that cre to create table users etc. Uh, Keystone is uh, centralized authentication for everything. So if you are like more more of a authentication authorization person, that's probably a good area for you. Uh, Cilometer provides metering and monitoring for the whole running thing. So uh, if you are more into monitoring stuff or operational. That's an interesting project to contribute to. Um, Horizon is the web UI, so that's the user-friendly face of OpenStack. For people that don't really want to play with the REST API directly, you can, you can use the, the web UI, and if you are more into JavaScript and, and Bootstrap, that's probably one good place to go. And finally, Heat is orchestration of resources, uh, the ability to describe a set of OpenStack resources in a single template and deploy that in a, in a predictable fashion. So if you're more into uh, configuration management and, and uh, orchestration, that's a good place to be. There are other projects that just like are bubbling up the top now. Uh, Savannah is data processing as a service. Actually uses Hadoop right now, um, so you can like push, push jobs and, and uh, retrieve results. Uh, Marconi is message queues as a service, so you provision a message queue, then you push messages and you retrieve messages. Designate is DNS as a service. So uh, uh, interact with name services through, uh, through a REST API. Uh, Barbican is management of secrets. Uh, there is like uh, uh, delivery of, of um, secret keys, cryptographic keys, um, get source of randomness, uh, etc. Uh, the difference between Barbican is, and something like Swift is that you can actually have audits, audits uh, of who accessed what, when, and, and which is quite interesting for uh, crypto cryptographic keys. Uh, Ironic is about deploying workloads to bare metal. So rather than, pro than provisioning a VM, you could actually deploy uh, the same workloads onto uh, a real machine. Uh, uses like Pixie, Pixie Boot to boot the machine and then deploy stuff in it. Uh, and Gantt is actually a spin up of the scheduler that was in Nova as an independent project because scheduling is actually something that other projects can benefit from, so it's an effort to reduce code duplication between, between projects. And then we have plenty of other programs. Documentation, we need documentation uh, because sometimes it's not really clear how to use this. Uh, infrastructure uh, is a major program we have uh, it's all the development infrastructure we have below OpenStack. I won't get into too much details on that because I have another talk tomorrow at, at 10 a.m. in the testing and automation dev room. So if you're interested in how we actually run development, and it's quite interesting, uh, uh, you should show up there. Uh, QA, because we do have tests. And uh, deployment is an interesting one. Uh, this is actually quite difficult to deploy. So how can we simplify deployment of OpenStack? And that's what the Triple O project does. The idea is to run OpenStack to deploy OpenStack. So it's OpenStack on OpenStack. And so you can actually uh, programmatically uh, deploy and continuously uh, deliver OpenStack as, as you go. And it's, uh, it's like 
the, uh, new things. It's not completely operational yet, but it's like one of the most interesting uh, development that we had in the last year. Uh, Common Library is another program. It's the idea that we have like plenty of code that is reused across projects. We should actually make libraries so, so that we don't duplicate code all over. So it's a good cleanup, uh, clean, clean, cleanup exercise. Uh, release management is my program. I'm the release manager for OpenStack. So it's trying to track what gets done and, and produce a release every six months in a predictable fashion. It's also about security advisories and uh, stable branch maintenance. And finally, DevStack is our last program. DevStack is our all-in-one installer that we uh, heavily use in integration tests to check that if we install everything, it's still working uh, all together. So it's both a way to install OpenStack for development, but also heavily used in testing. So that gives you the, like, the picture of, of the landscape of projects we have in OpenStack, but that doesn't give you an idea of what type of contributions are actually wanted in, in OpenStack. Uh, how am I doing? Not too bad. So we have developers. Obviously, we need developers um, for code changes that can be features, that can be bug fixes. Uh, the code is mostly Python. There is a hint of JavaScript, especially in the web UI, obviously. We still can use Java developers, don't despair. Uh, they, especially we have pieces of the infrastructure that uh, like run Garrett or Jenkins and we sometimes need stuff being pushed in that direction, but it's mostly Python. At that point you may wonder, yeah, but that sounds like complex stuff, can I actually do that? And, and the answer is yes, because uh, Python is easy and this is actually not rocket science. Uh, it, I mean, we are not writing a new hypervisor or, or uh, writing a new block device for, for uh, block device type for, for the kernel or anything. We're just interfacing. We're just the glue between, uh, between a, a, a REST API and real resources that smart people actually wrote. And so the trick is to do it at scale. The, the real trick is, is that we do it at a scale that is so massive that we discover new problems but uh, it doesn't rely on a pre-existing knowledge that only a handful of people that started working on cloud 100 years ago would, would have. It's, it's not rocket science. It's actually, if, you, if you've done uh, uh, especially system management type programming where, where you automated things and, and you just like created glue between applications, it's actually quite what we're, what we're actually doing. There are a few specialized areas like networking where, we, where you cannot really fake you don't know anything about networking. It's really difficult. But uh, on the others, uh, interacting with Libverb, for example, we had a like, Dan Danielle presentation just before. It's just about maintaining uh, the glue between the API services, the, the scheduler that lets you get which machine you should actually get stuff run on and, and, uh, and the Libverb calls. But then we also need DevOps and sysadmins. Uh, we, we run our whole infrastructure using Puppet. So if you like to write Puppet recipes, uh, it's actually quite easy to contribute. Our whole infrastructure is also completely open source and, and pushed to Git repositories. So it's completely open. You can look and see. And if you're interested, I'm pretty sure uh, Jim will be happy to discuss with you. Uh, we need continuous deployment expertise for the Triple O team because they are addressing this difficult uh, uh, question of how can we continuously deploy OpenStack uh, and, and do that in, in an open source project that you can reuse if you want to deploy OpenStack. Uh, you can also just be a, a user and support users that are asking questions on our ask.openstack.org uh, website. It's, it's one way of contributing to OpenStack as well. Uh, we also need UX, UX designers. If what you do for a living is doing wireframes, uh, we are actually trying to think about uh, uh, this, the, the UI the, of the various interfaces that we deliver now. And so there is a place for you if you are into wireframing and thinking before doing. Uh, that would be UX designers group. Uh, we also need technical writers, a lot. <laughs> Uh, we do what we call book sprints, which is uh, write, write a book in an open source way in a, uh, as, as a group. So they have those uh, um, 
they gather all together and, and have this, uh, what they call book sprints, where, where they share the, um, the they split the, the chapters of the book they are trying to write between them. And, and in one week, they manage to write a book that O'Reilly is willing to publish. So it's probably not too bad. Uh, and this is the OpenStack operations guide that we have. We also have an OpenStack security guide that was written this way. So we push open source or free software style development into areas where we're things were not actually done that way, which is like book editing or, or uh, UI wireframing. We could also use translators, uh, like you can see here, English is better supported than anything else. Uh, and at that point, you might be also asking, well, that's all fine and dandy, but it's a bit confusing. Where, where can I make a difference? Where, where if I show up and do stuff, uh, I will be seen as a good citizen rather than as uh, someone that just wanted, wants to have a job. Uh, and my response to that is you should contribute strategic contributions rather than tactical contributions. And tactical contributions would be uh, this, so corner features, stuff that you just only you care about or your employer cares about. Uh, drivers and support for a specific technology, so you are like a, a vendor for SAN and you just want OpenStack to be able to run on top of your hardware, that's not really helpful for uh, most of us. Uh, adding config options, adding confusion just for the sake of it, meh, not so great. And fixing your own bugs, so bugs that only affect yourself. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, strategic contributions, so fix critical bug fixes, we have sometimes critical bug fixes, especially some of them blocking our continuous integration uh, um, automation. And then we actually need some people to be willing to tackle those hard issues and fix them. And, and that's uh, what I would call strategic contribution. Uh, working on common code libraries, so reducing technical debt is also really useful. Uh, contributing integration tests, uh, that's really useful because if we consider that it's, if it's not tested, it's broken. So um, when there is no integration test, it's actually broken. And uh, documentation is always useful. And strategy, uh, security audits and patches are also things that are generally useful for the project. Uh, maybe we'll pause for questions until the end to make sure that we have um, We have time for them. OK, so um, last part of this presentation is how. How would you contribute to OpenStack? Uh, yeah, we are not using pull request. So the OpenStack way, we have rep uh, reference master Git rep repositories. And we don't have committers. We have only have code reviewers. So uh, uh, you propose a change, it gets reviewed by a number of people. And at some point, it gets approved by uh, the required number of people, and then it gets thrown out to our testing automation system that I will present tomorrow, and then uh, it's, it gets merged. So you don't have like someone with superpower that is superior to anyone else that actually has the ability to commit code to your repository. Everyone goes through this uh, code review system. There is no uh, wildcard that lets you uh, abuse it. And if it's not tested, cannot, and if it's not working, cannot end up in the in the code repository, so there is no way to break things that we actually test, which is the reason why if it's not tested, it's broken, because so that's how we do things. Um, so this is how we commit a change. So you would clone the Git repository, prepare the change in your branch, submit it for review. At that point, the change gets automatically tested. So you have a first feedback automated from our uh, automated testing systems. Then the change gets reviewed by humans, and some post-humans have approval rights that uh, will, uh, if you have enough of them, then you can basically um, get approved. Then the change gets retested with the current state of, of the code repository, just in case something breaks in the middle of it. And then the change is merged. So this is how we do things. Uh, before you contribute, there are a number of steps, uh, mostly so that you have the right accounts for the code review system. So you need to create a Launchpad account because that's what we use for uh, authentication. We're gradually moving out of it. But at that moment today, this is still the, the, the process you should be following. You need to join the OpenStack Foundation because to contribute to OpenStack, you need to be a member of the, of the nonprofit. 
uh, as a group that runs the, the, the wheel infrastructure and, and, and trademark things around OpenStack. Then you can log on into review.openstack.org using the login you created with Launchpad, and you can agree to our uh, um, contributor license agreement. It's not a copyright assignment, it's just a license uh, uh, agreement. So this is actually acceptable, even if we try to get rid of it. <laughs> and all those steps are uh, described at that wiki page that I put at the bottom of this page. And then it looks like this. We use uh, a Git plugin called Git Review that we de developed within OpenStack so that you can have a one, uh, one command to submit a change for review in our review system. So it looks like this. You Git clone a repository. Uh, you um, then use Git Review Manager S to set up the remote that will point to the Garrett code review system that we have. Then you make some changes. You commit them. And then you do git review, and that pushes the change you proposed to uh, uh, our code review system. And you, can, you have a URL that you can reference. And then, like I said, humans will, review, uh, it will get automatically tested. Humans will review it, et cetera, et cetera. Everything that is proposed to OpenStack goes, goes into this funnel. And everything is visible because all the code reviews happen in a, a public website. So that's something it's really easy to participate to. And this is what our Garrett code review system looks like. Uh, so you have the change here with the commit message, uh, whoever proposed it. Uh, here is the approval thing. So I actually reviewed it, but I don't have the power to approve it in any way. Uh, Flavio here uh, approved it, but it's not. we need at least two of those core reviewers to approve it before it's accepted. But anyone can participate in the code review. You don't have to be uh, special in any way. And there, here's the change. You can, and here is the, all the comments that we pushed to the code review system for that change. And the neat thing about Garrett is that you can comment at the at line level. So you can have these small discussions about this is better or not, and have one-to-one -one things. So this is how it looks like. Uh, to contribute to OpenStack, we contribute docs this way, we contribute infrastructure change this way, we contribute everything this way. Everything is code. So uh, the basic thing is know how to interact with Git, because that's, otherwise it's a bit difficult. And I think I'm done. Yes, 30 minutes. So thank you for listening. I hope that was useful for you. And we have five minutes for questions. Good. Uh, uh, just. Two short questions. Uh, I didn't see Glans in the uh, in the list of projects. Is that not an OpenStack project? Glans, the image ser service. Glans. Uh. Oh, I, oh, I missed it. Okay, Oops. so it was just an omission. Yes. Okay. Uh, the other one. Uh, can you briefly explain the uh, C CLA, uh, the, the agreement? Uh, I may not know. Maybe Jim, you can take that. CLA. No. But you know more about it than I do. <laughs> so it's a, it's a license grant, I think, uh, that is, according to some lawyers, necessary f if you contribute to uh, an Apache licensed project for full protection. But they don't all agree on, and which is the reason why we're trying to get rid of it. Because it's a barrier to entry, and it's apparently useless according to half the lawyers. So we should try to get rid of it because that creates, especially for companies, barriers to entry because they actually have to read it and to understand it. And it's very confusing. So it's a license grant. Like, like you will not sue uh, whatever. And uh, 
that must have been crystal clear. Do you know what one? 